بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عباده الذين اصطفى وبعد My beloved brothers my sisters I'm seated here listening to the energy of the brothers who were appealing to you and I to assist and to help those in need Something came to my mind One of my favorite surahs of the Quran is surah al-duha In it Allah Almighty makes mention of so many things I go through a lot of challenges and so do you in your life There are times when you make a dua you supplicate to Allah you ask him and it seems like to the human mind that perhaps we're not getting the response we want we know we have faith that Allah has heard we know we have faith that Allah responds but we want it our way and we want it now and we want it quickly but Allah knows when the time is right he will give you what you are asking for But if he knows it's not good for you wouldn't you want him not to give it to you I've asked that question to a few of the youngsters and they say no just give it to me and then I'll see and then perhaps I'll make another dua to him to take it away <laughs> But Allah doesn't work that way Allah knows this is not good for you we will not give it to you if a little child is crying is crying to actually get hold of a knife that is so sharp would you give the child the knife that's the question you wouldn't let them cry it's okay let them think you're not listening to them it's fine well there is something important because with us when people ask us like this evening the minimum we have all done i'm sure is felt within our hearts that this cause is indeed a good cause that's number 1 you hear about the orphans and you feel may allah save them may allah never test us with those tests you hear about the floods and the earthquakes you hear about those struggling you hear about the women and the orphans the widows and what came to my mind as well was the hadith that says The one who is occupied in serving the widows and orphans is equivalent to the one who is occupied in constant prayer every night and constant fasting every day. That's the hadith of the Prophet. Peace be upon him. So if you're occupied in assisting, that hadith didn't say men although there are men in need, mashallah. But it concentrated on the most vulnerable. Like Sheikh Akram mentioned moments ago, the most vulnerable the women the orphans the widows if we're not going to reach out to them what's going to happen so there is something interesting with us as believers the first stage is we feel in our hearts you know what that's a good cause and then sometimes we're not able to assist in a way that perhaps others are able to assist Not everyone can just say right 30 grand I'm going to give it 10 grand or 5000 or even 500 not everyone can but sometimes a prayer that comes from your heart may reach further than something monetary that you could do so do not underestimate yourselves the ability that you have the capacity that is god given is yours from Allah Almighty he kept you within a certain capacity he would allow you to grow differently what you have i don't have what i have you don't have but we all have that's the thing your gift is different from mine mine is different from yours but we're all gifted none of us can ever think for a moment Allah did not give me I mentioned something interesting last night and I want to repeat it because someone sent me an email to say I never looked at it that way. What was it? Allah says, 
وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا If you are going to count the favors of Allah, you won't be able to count all of them. In a nutshell, that's what the verse means. If you are going to count the favors of Allah, try to count them all, you won't be able to count them all. So Allah has blessed you and I with favors that none of us are able to count. Not one of us. How did Allah favor you? Well, He gave me my life to begin with. He made me a believer. He's given me my eyes, my nose, my lips, my tongue, my teeth. What else? He's given me my identity. He's made me able, capable. He's given me people around me. He's given me perhaps a job, an income, or whatever it may be. Some might be thinking, you know, I don't have some of what you just mentioned now, right? So that takes us to the point. The point is, if Allah tells you, you will never be able to count my favors upon you, I promise you the challenges he put in your lives, you will be able to count those. They are only a handful. I ask all of you, myself included, how many difficulties do you have in your life? Start counting. I promise you, you'll say, I've got this problem, that challenge, this issue, that family matter, this problem at work, uh, this issue with my health. And that matter, how many is that? Seven. <laughs> what about the gifts of Allah? How many did you count? But to you, those seven are finished. That's it, my life is over. I don't want to live anymore. I don't want to see anyone. But there's seven things you counted. That's it. You count ten things. I promise you, you probably won't go beyond ten things. And I swear, think about it, all of us. You think your life is a mess. And you think you're going through challenge upon challenge. Trust me, there won't be more than ten in most cases. Major things going wrong in your life. What is it? Not much. That's the gift of Allah. So, when we assist others, Allah assists us. But there is something way more important than just giving financially. One day I was seated with a brother and someone threw some money at him for a cause that he was collecting for. And he was elderly, so he looked at the young man who was a businessman. He says, can you pick it up and give it to me respectfully because I'm collecting on behalf of the poor. You don't throw money at them. Subhanallah, he's teaching someone and he had the guts to say that, the courage. And when I was sitting there, I felt so awkward because this was also a VIP, an important guy. But the way he threw the money, you don't throw the money. Why? More important than your cash is the respect that you offer the poor. Now I go back to Surat al duha one of my favorite. We go through challenges and problems. What does Allah say? مَا وَدَّعَكَ رَبُّكَ وَمَا قَالَ Yes, it is to Muhammad, peace be upon him. We have not forsaken you, we're not upset with you. But the lesson is for all of us. Sometimes we think, is Allah upset with me? Is he angry with me? Well, I tell you that question is not a bad question because perhaps it may help you improve in certain aspects of your life. But don't get depressed by the question because chances are that's not the case. Chances are Allah just wants you to come closer to him and perhaps he may not be giving you exactly what you want because of what we mentioned earlier that he knows it's not good for you at all or not good for you at this particular moment so he's delaying it you failed your examination he wants you to have all A's next year why who knows I'm gonna say something silly let me say it you might meet someone who you end up marrying, subhanAllah, and your life started and mashallah, why? Because I failed. So I ended up in this classroom and mashallah, I couldn't help but notice a person who deserves to be a wife. Wow. Thanks to your failure. <laughs> mashallah. But it could happen. It might be a silly example, but it's something you've got to think about. Ponder. Maybe Allah did not want you to work at a certain place because he needed you to interact with others at another place altogether. Whatever. Trust him. Then Allah says, You want, don't you? Allah says, very soon we will give you so much. Fatarda until the point when you will be happy. In the Arabic language, that fa has so many meanings. One of them is 
to the point of, to the point of. So Allah will give you so much to the point of happiness, to the point that you are, you are so happy. I remember visiting a country in Africa once. I mentioned this in my lectures in the past, but I want to say it again. And these people were relatively poor. Many years ago, I was quite young. And I visited them at my expense. They'd invited me for a few days. And I could see they were struggling just to host the guest they had. But it's okay. We grew up in Africa too. And we were okay with that. It doesn't really mean much. It's fine whether it's this way or that way. I'm not too much into food and all the luxuries and so on. So I know it's fine. But on the last day they were excited because they had a little ceremony of farewell. And they said to me, we have a gift to give you. The one brother, he, now he's a good friend of mine. But at the time, I didn't really know him much. I just had met him two, three days, the, the tour that I had. And then he tells me, no, we have a gift. We want to present it to you. I, Mashallah, I'm excited. These guys are probably going to give me a souvenir from this place. Something amazing. And you know what? He calls me up. He says, we have a gift to give you. And then I walked up the stage and I'm shaking his hand. He faces uh, the, 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 the public or the people who had gathered, he looks and he says, my brother gave me a hug and he says, the gift we want to give you is a verse of the Quran. That's it. I promise you, I shed a tear because it was very sincere. It means we have nothing material to give you. But we pray that Allah gives you so much until you're happy. I swear, every time I achieve something in my life, somehow my mind keeps going back, seeing the face of this brother and what he said. To this day, to this day. And I remember him all the time and I send him messages. And I've met him after that a few times, but I've never had that. Before or after. That is a powerful verse Allah will give you. You do something for his cause. He owns entire creation. Tonight Allah did not need you and I to help people. He would do it himself. He's only giving us an opportunity. Hence in the same surah. When Allah says as for the beggar. What did he say regarding the beggar? Listen to this. You know the verse, don't you? Most of us do, the surah. Let me tell you what that means. As for the one who is asking, Asail, the one who's asking, it's simple for Allah says, فَأَعْطِيهِ So give him. Allah didn't say give him. Giving is not from you, it's from Allah. Allah says something amazing, more important than giving. Offer him respect. That's it. Allah didn't say a'tihi. Never. Allah didn't say as for the one asking you, the one begging, give him something. No. Do not rebuke him. That's all. As for the giving, we will do it. Don't worry. We'll either put it in your heart or the hearts of someone else. Or we may do it without anyone on our own. So doesn't that show you what's more important than, than an amount? My brothers, my sisters offer people respect. Women from amongst us, we offer them respect. The young from amongst us, we offer them respect. You want to gauge where your standing is in the eyes of Allah beyond your prayer and your primary duties. Look at how you treat those who have nothing or very little. If you can offer them a greeting with a smile and respect, you have achieved something. If not, you have a lot of work to do on yourself. Because the greatest of charities are those that are perhaps not monetary. I remember a brother making a donation. And after some time, he visited the organization. I'm not saying what it was because I don't want it to be personal. After some time, someone told him something, someone said something else and someone, and he had a big donation. He came and said, listen, I've changed my mind. I need my money back. So there was a meeting because it was an amount. 
They asked him why. He said, because someone told me something and I just don't want my money anymore there. They had a meeting and the CEO decides, you know what? Give him his money back. No problem. It was tough. It's difficult because of paperwork. They gave the money back a week later. An anonymous guy comes in and donates double the amount. Double the amount. What was it? It was just Allah swapping. That's it. The cause continues. The train will keep moving. The plane will continue to fly with you or without you. I'm not saying the brother was wrong. He might have used that money in a better cause in his own way. But what I am saying, my beloved brothers and sisters, Allah knows what he is doing. Allah will use you and continue to ask Allah, Oh Allah, use me to do good things. Oh Allah, use me to do good things. Oh Allah, the bad things create a barrier between me and them so that I don't do them. Oh Allah, help me to respect people, people who are downtrodden, people who have nothing, people who may not look like, and this is something that we have as a weakness, humankind, we look at people and we judge. You know, you wouldn't say Salaam Alaikum just because... Look at what she looks like, man. Are you prepared to offer respect to someone who you know deserves a salam? Because they're Muslim. The rest of the detail is up to Allah. That minimum you offer them. You owe it to them. Here's the Prophet, peace be upon him, saying, Should I not show you something? If you were to do it, it would increase the love amongst you. Look at the hatred in the Ummah today. Small difference of how we pray and the little difference of how we say things and what we do and what's permissible and not some little differences where there is scope of difference. But we don't even talk to each other. We hate each other. We, we, we don't even want to acknowledge each other. That's not the Ummah. That's not the Ummah. If the Prophet, peace be upon him, was here today, I'm sure we would have a much easier life with so much of love. But his lessons are here. His teachings are here. We're talking about them today. You can be as strict a Muslim as you want. Do not belittle the one who's not as strict as you. Why? You never know which way the tables may go. And secondly, by your kindness, your goodness, you may encourage them slowly but surely to come across. Remember, a football match, and mashallah, we sold a few of the shirts today. Alhamdulillah. I thought they would have gone for a bit more, guys. Mashallah. And by the way, the sister whose uh, painting went up, I would have thought 50,000 would have been a good amount. But Allah will give you a reward, my beloved child, whoever she was. It was so, so beautiful to see what happened. For someone to make a painting and to give it as their own way of contributing towards such a cause, may Allah give you Jannah. And may Allah take you to the place that you painted again and again so that you paint it in your soul, mashallah. So Allah Almighty knows, my brothers, my sisters, I said a moment ago, we sold some of these t-shirts. In football, you could be losing. 1-0, 2-0, 3-0. They are laughing at you. Are they laughing? Yes, they are. Spiritually, that's what happens. I am a team. I'm strong. I'm practicing. I'm, I'm, mashallah, I'm strict. I've got everything going. I read Quran fluently. And here's the sister. Here's the brother. Nothing's going on. I'm winning. How much? 1-0, 2-0, 3-0, 4-0. -0. It's halfway. We stopped. 5-0. And then what happened? Come back. After half time. Can things change? When is it that a match is decided? At that time or right at the end when the whistle blows? It's when the whistle blows. The fact that you are one or two up at the beginning is irrelevant. It's got nothing to do with anything. It's got to do with the end. It's got to do with the end. So the fact that you and I are alive and seated here, Wallahi, there is khair. There is goodness. There is a lot. Allah has created you. Like I always say, He knows you personally. And guess what? He loves you. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. 
He's waiting for you. He knows you are coming. He knows your heart. He knows your soul. He knows that you have that faith, that kindness within you, the softness of the soul. He knows your struggles, you alone. And he knows the struggles. That's it. People are quick to judge. They don't know what you've been through in your life. They don't know the type of trauma you might have faced. They don't know what you may have faced when you were little in terms of abuse or whatever else it may have been. Allah knows. Leave them. It's not about the people. It's very difficult to say what I've just said now. The reason is, sadly, when we become religious, we also tend to become judgmental. That's what it is. In no way am I condoning wrong activity or that which is in transgression of Allah. But all I'm saying is, come, come, slowly but surely. We're all going to enter Jannah together by the will of Allah. You see these faces. By the will of Allah, we see you in Jannah. I promise you. <laughs> Hold the faces here. It's an ummah. Jannah is broad. It will cater for all of us and beyond, more than us. Not trillions, but quadrillions and more. My brothers and sisters, learn to love one another. Learn to have a heart and a soul that feels and cares. Look at the ahadith that make mention of people who have wronged others, backbiting, deceiving, cheating and so on. Their good deeds, as many as they may be, begin to go to other people. And then you have a person who quenched the thirst of a dog who's totally forgiven. I mean, what happened here? What exactly happened here? It's the mercy of Allah. So when I look back at the Quran and I see these verses and read them, I tend to become empowered to improve my conduct, my character. وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, being described as upon tremendous character, beautiful, outstanding character. That was Muhammad, peace be upon him. His own wife said his character was the Quran. I need to have good character. So Allah says, as for the beggar, as for the beggar, do not rebuke him. In another place in the Quran, Allah Almighty says, Tell my worshippers, my worshippers, to utter that which is beautiful, which is the best. Ahsan actually means that which is better. So if there are two or three or four ways of saying something, say it in the best possible way. Today we have many challenges living in the West, many challenges. It's not easy to live as a Muslim. And to identify as a Muslim at a time when people look at you and I with the eye of skepticism and they begin to say things and believe things and even treat us badly. It's not easy for our girls and our women and our men as well. Where everything that is happening sometimes is a challenge. It's not easy. But if you can navigate through all of that and Allah is watching and Allah knows, you may falter this way, that way, you may sway, your boat may rock, but at the end of the day, you're still on the boat, alhamdulillah, and you're still rowing and you're still heading in the right direction. Even if you're slower than the others, it's okay, but you're coming. May Allah Almighty take us all. Allah says, tell my worshippers to say that which is beautiful. You know, when we judge people, hey, you know, you're going to hell. Why? Because you don't have a scarf on your head. Okay, let's stop for a moment. I'm not belittling the importance of things. But I want to say, the Prophet Moses, may peace be upon him. Was he not better than you and I? Was he not better than all of us put together? The most practicing and the most pious person on earth today doesn't even come close to the status of the Prophet Musa. Moses may peace be upon him. Do you agree? Yes. And Allah sent him to the Pharaoh. I want to tell you who that Pharaoh was. He used to say, Ana In fact, another verse, 
وقال فرعون يا ايها الملا ما علمت لكم من اله غيري what a shameless statement Allah says the pharaoh used to tell his people i don't know of a god for you guys to worship besides me Allahu akbar what a what a filthy statement i don't know of a god that you guys could worship besides me i'm your guys' god that's what he said so there is nobody on earth today who could be worse than that pharaoh allah sent to him not just one prophet a few musa and harun they went to him so allah sent someone better than you and i to someone worse than the worst person than you and i is ever going to come across on earth and still allah told them faqula lahu qawlan layyinan la'allahu yatadhakkaru aw yakhsha amazing allah says go to him speak to him with softness soft words perhaps he may take heed and he may remember he may come to terms with what is being told to him why because speak to him softly that softness that those soft words good words will perhaps bring him who was allah saying this to to someone better than all of us facing someone worse than the worst that we would ever face so what makes us think that we have the right to speak to anyone in a harsh manner trying to call them towards goodness people don't come towards goodness if you slash them and you actually attack them no they will come towards goodness when you remind them this evening we must have raised tens of thousands of dollars in no time may allah write it in the book of your good deeds and may allah make it such that even those like myself who were witnessing it may allah reward us i was doing a cheeky thing sitting there my pockets were empty but mashallah you know i told myself ya allah put it in the hearts of people to give and i kept saying that why because i know something I felt so good when I heard the figures go up. I said, "Oh Allah, that's my dua, man. I'm getting a full reward for all this, man. I'm sitting here free of charge. I'm getting a full reward of everything. That's the deen of Allah. Cheeky thing, but mashallah, we took the reward. <laughs> And the beauty is, everyone could have been doing that at the same time. You're getting the reward. May Allah Almighty bless all of us. So, my brothers and sisters, respect is something that is priceless. In fact Allah Almighty mentions it again in the Quran when someone rebukes you or someone speaks to you in a rough way Allah tells you you know what be polite be the bigger person listen to what Allah Almighty says wa idha khatabahum aljahilun qalu salama another beautiful verse Allah says when the worshipers of the almighty the worshipers of the most merciful when they are addressed by the ignorant with bad words or with a bad tone or whatever it may be you're addressed by the ignorant allah doesn't say respond to them he doesn't say that allah did not say jawib hum or give him a response of this and you know engage him in discussion no 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 allah just says they say salam so what does salam mean Salam means peace. I don't want war. So gauge the situation. Who is this? What are they saying? Do they deserve that I perhaps guide them? Because at times you may want to respond depending on what it is. Definitely. But the general rule is if this person's not prepared and not in the right frame at that particular time of mind or situation to even take your words, there's no point in arguing. Just say salam and walk away. the smile should be broader than ever imagine someone swearing you the biggest of swear words you know we used to have the f's and the b's and so on you know those words yeah now we've got the other ones the w's and the z's and so on crazy words i don't even know them <laughs> but subhanallah when they come up with all these words imagine you just look at them say hi salam peace they feel like fools because they're trying to really you know 
like we say, key you up. You know, they're trying to really frustrate you. And here you are, mashallah, salam. That is a beautiful teaching of the Quran. It's a teaching of the Quran. Calm down, relax, take it easy. Their insults are not going to harm you. They won't. If insults harmed people, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was insulted. If it did anything, it only reduced the level of those who insulted, not the one being insulted. <laughs> Nothing. Don't, don't worry. Keep on doing your good work and carry on. You know yourself. So this is something that I really believe is life-changing. When we learn to respect ourselves and others, and those who are downtrodden, reach out to them with your charities. MashaAllah, we have human appeal here this evening. We're talking about so many different causes. I, I'm looking and each time something comes up, I feel in my heart, this is very important. This is a very important thing. And then there is an appeal made and people are giving. And I think to myself, and I, and I did think this while I was seated here, the next thing that came up, I felt, oh, this is even more important. Why didn't they start with this and then mention the other one? But then they're all important. And I said, there must be people in our crowd who gave to something. And when they heard about the next or the third thing, they said, oh, I should have rather given there than here. It happens because you start thinking which cause to give. Thank Allah, he's accepted your wealth. Because... If he wanted, that wealth wouldn't even have been used in a good cause. How many people have a lot? But their money is wasted. I'm not saying it's wrong to buy luxuries, Masha. You want your G-Wagon, it's fine, you can have it. Yes, it's a very, very, very overrated vehicle according to me. <laughs> Highly uncomfortable. I don't know if you've been in them. But mashallah, it's still the in thing. Everyone goes crazy about it for some reason, mashallah. Marketing strategies. Alhamdulillah, I'm sure if they get Sheikh Akram and, some, and, 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 and our brother there uh, to market for them, they'd probably sell even more. MashaAllah. <laughs> May Allah bless you. But the reality is, we use our money. We need to live a life of comfort. That's human nature. You can have your, a few things that are here and there. You know, it might not be a necessity. It's a little bit of a luxury. But to be honest, no wastage. We're taught in Islam, don't have two of what you just need one of. You can have expensive vehicle, but don't buy five, six of them and keep them. For what? Unless you're trading in them. It's another thing. So waste is not the quality. Waste is actually the quantity. Are you using it? Yes, I am. I go back to my wardrobe and I look at it and I tell myself, if I haven't worn these clothes for more, for more than six months, pick it out, give it away. Pick it out and give it away. And if you want, say one year, because you have winter and summer and so on. I know people... <laughs> Clothes are from a century back, man, mashallah. And they always say, I'm going to fit in this again one day, inshallah. You know, it's okay. <laughs> We've all gained a bit of weight, mashallah. It's fine. It's healthy. It's healthy. It's healthy to weigh a little bit more, mashallah. My brothers, my sisters, when we speak about faith and religion, many times people feel very uneasy. But we need to remind one another in a beautiful way to say, let's move towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever Allah has blessed you with, use it to serve the cause. Beautiful verse that I heard earlier this evening, also on our topic, and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the story of Qarun, in the story of Qarun, Allah says, وَابْتَغِ فِيمَا آتَاكَ اللَّهُ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةِ وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا وَأَحْسِنْ كَمَا أَحْسَنَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكَ Three things I want to mention. The first is, use whatever Allah has given you to build your hereafter. Allah didn't say money in particular. Whatever we gave you, we gave you a field, you're a doctor, you might be a lawyer, you might be a school teacher, you might be whoever. You may have things, you may not have things. Whatever Allah has blessed you with, and like I said, we're all blessed in our own ways. Use that thing to build your hereafter. Some of it, use it, mashallah. Whatever we've given you, use it to build your hereafter. 
And do not forget your portion of this world. That verse is amazing. That shows us that we are created as human. We like nice things. We all like nice things. I smelt a scent earlier this evening. I had to ask, Mashallah, what are you wearing? Ah, see the smiles. Imagine, what are you wearing? Do you know that question can actually make somebody's life? What are you wearing? They're like, ah, oh, my life is made. Khalas. I'm wearing such a beautiful scent. This guy actually asked me, what are you wearing? Subhanallah. May Allah grant us ease. But what I mean is, human beings like nice things. It's natural. It's okay. It's not haram. Don't let someone say, no, you're not allowed. You're allowed. It's fine. But make sure you don't indulge in a way that you forget about Allah. And you forget about the needy. And you forget about the others around you. And you forget about the hereafter. That is something we have to highlight. And the third thing and the last thing that I'd like to mention where he says, Allah says, Ahsin kama ahsan Allahu ilayk. Do good, just like Allah did good to you. Do good to who? To others. Did Allah not favor you? Well, in your own way, favor others. He won't be able to reach Allah. Because Allah is a different example. Allah favored you. He's given you so much in whatever He has. Well, I tell you, Allah says, favor others like we favored you. We gave you. Now give others. And that's why Islam is the only religion on earth, the only religion in existence that makes it a pillar of faith, which means you are not a Muslim. If you don't firmly believe that this is a pillar of my faith, to share what you have with those who don't have it. It's called zakat. It's the only religion that makes it a pillar. Yes, the other religions do have charities and so on. This is a pillar. Allah says, if you don't believe that you have to share what we've given you, you're not a Muslim. Allahu Akbar. Have you thought of that? That's a powerful way of saying it because it's true. I'm proud to be a Muslim because my faith, a pillar of it is that I have to give what I have been given and share it with those who do not have it. Look for them, search for them, hunt for them. And when I find them, I must be happy and overjoyed. Whoa, one of my pillars I'm about to fulfill here is a wonderful cause. I give you a quick example. When you hear a beautiful recital of Sheikh Muhammad Jibreel, Sheikh Ishaq Danish, and a few of the others, wouldn't you love to go to that particular masjid where the adhan is amazing, the ambience is beautiful, the sound is awesome, the qira'a is amazing, and you are plugged into your prayer and you enjoy reading behind the imam. You feel so happy to go to that masjid because a pillar of your faith is about to be fulfilled and is being fulfilled in the most blessed way you're excited similar if not more should be the excitement when suddenly you've discovered a needy cause it's the same pillars I discovered a cause human appeal Australia is doing that for you going around the world checking what's going on where can we help what should we do how can we do it? Then they come back to you, give you, hey guys, I tell you what, we saw something in Somalia. These guys, this is what they need. Wow, wow. Allah will put it in your heart as you're watching, as you're seeing. Allah puts it in your heart. Okay, I'm going to fit in here. That's it. What happened? Allah's blessed you. You should be happy, overjoyed. Ya Allah. You told me to share. I, I now found some place where I'm going to share that. And the minimum is don't rebuke. You know, back, at, back in Africa, I don't think you have this issue in Australia. We have at the traffic lights, people begging. Do you have it here? Not really. You have people begging. They come and people say, hey, close your window, that's a thief. <laughs> and I say to them, if you don't want to give, don't give, but don't just say they're a thief. You have no idea what they might be going through. You know, there was an elderly lady, one, please, I need to eat something. I need to eat something. So we stopped and we, we, we wanted to give her some food. She says, no, I need money. So whoever was with me, let me not embarrass them, says, are you going to eat the money? <laughs> because obviously, you know. So the lady says, the lady actually responded in a beautiful way. No, I need to buy a specific food for my baby. And she was old. So whose baby was it? It might have been her grandchild. 
And I'm thinking, look at how quick we were to judge. No, they want food, they want to eat, but they don't even want the slice of bread. Well, who knows? Give or keep quiet. May Allah Almighty bless all of us, grant us ease and goodness. I've really enjoyed myself uh, here in this beautiful, beautiful gathering of amazingly beautiful, lovely faces and warm hearts here in this beautiful city of Melbourne. We're just here for a few hours, but trust me, it feels like I was here since the last time. May Allah bless you all.